Okay, it is now my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Peter Meacher. His bio is in the announcement, uh, just like the bios of other presenters. Um, Peter is a medical director of perhaps the best known and I would say the oldest uh, LGBT program in New York City, Colin Lord Health Center, and he will talk about primary care of transgender patients. Great, thank you so much. Uh, my name again, Peter Meacher, my pronouns are he and him, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here to talk a little about the work we do at Cal and Lord, and more broadly about the primary care for TGMB patients. TGMB uh, being the acronym Transgender Gender Non-Binary. Uh, the next slide. Um, so briefly, I wanted to touch on these two objectives in the short 15 minutes I have. I think one thing I'd like to point out that if you're a primary care physician or medical provider with around 2,000 people in your practice, which seems pretty uh, uh, on target, you should have 10 to 20 transgender or gender non-binary uh, patients in that 2000 uh, uh, population and you know that's based on population studies if you don't then one of two things is happening either uh, your patients are not declaring themselves to you or they're not coming in for health care so there are plenty of things we learn about in primary care where the incidence is much less than that. So this really is, I would argue, something that should be bread and butter of primary care for all PCPs. Our next slide. So Callan Lord has been around, if we could have the next slide. Callan Lord has been around for some 50 years. We actually trace our history back to the Stonewall riots. Uh, from that era merged a number of community-based organizations that really uh, that started off providing sexual health to gay men but during the 80s 90s and thereafter has expanded uh, and become what is now Cal and Lord um, obviously the HIV and AIDS crisis in the 80s and 90s really galvanized things the next slide um, we are currently now a federally qualified health center. We are what's called a magnet site, so we're not strictly based on geography. We have about 18,000 patients in 100,000 visits annually. Um, everything we do is we consider to be under a large sort of primary care umbrella. We have in excess of 4,000 uh, TGMB patients, which I believe is the largest uh, cohort in a single um, delivery site anywhere in the world. I'm, I have not heard of anywhere with a larger cohort. And we provide uh, medical, behavioral health, dental, and all the support services to deliver HIV, PrEP, mm -hmm. sexual health, uh, whole array of other things and uh, very much including TGMB care. Next slide. Um, so uh, primary care is primary care no matter who we're taking care of uh, and strong primary care providers take care of everyone for a lifetime. They know their community and they know the context in which they're providing care in terms of family and relationships. It's so important to engage patients in healthcare and build trust. And of these four things listed above, those first two are sometimes the hardest and most important things to do. Because until you've done that, you can't do any of the sort of preventative primary care that we're really set up to excel in. Our next slide. Um, let's consider the patient's perspective, thinking about TGMB patients. There's really a triad of things going on. Uh, people who are TGMP 
uh, live with the stress of not being cisgendered and straight sometimes, uh, plus the intersectionality of other identities and attributes in a, a hetero cis normative uh, or sometimes transphobic uh, society. In fact, there have been plenty of studies that show really simple things make a huge difference. Um, you know, if uh, there was a, a great study looking at a school where they simply allowed uh, kids to use their preferred pronoun and name and the uh, incidence of sort of risk-taking behavior changed significantly with that very simple intervention. And it's this risk-taking behavior that leads to a lot of the poor health outcomes that you will hear about this morning. Um, that coupled with not feeling safe in the health system, not engaging with care, and with a health system that's poorly trained to take care of uh, the TGMB community's needs, you can see how these three things all interplay and lead to the poor health outcomes that we uh, are aware of. Next slide. There's a lot of data out there showing these poor health outcomes and uh, uh, some of them I put up here. Uh, you know, there's uh, a meta-analysis looking at many studies showing that attempted and completed suicides are much higher in this population. Um, and again, this, I want to be very clear, this is really all about the way people are treated in society versus anything inherent about themselves and connected to their TGMB identity. But going through our society as a TGMB person is incredibly stressful. There was also a great cohort study looking over 30 years at well over a thousand trans men and women. Uh, and some of the data is displayed, although I'm sure you can't read it here. Um, and it uh, uh, shows that lung cancer and heart disease rates were much higher, probably because smoking is much higher. HIV rates, much higher. Suicide and drug taking, much higher. Um, if we look at uh, HIV specifically, transgender women are 49 times more likely to be HIV infected than the population at large. This, in the US, a full 22% of trans women are HIV positive. And the rates within, when you break it down by racial and ethnic minorities, the rates are even higher. Again, speaking to that intersectionality of, uh, of uh, disease burden. The next slide. So the risk-taking behavior is certainly a huge part of this, um, but it's more than that, and it's a lot to do with the disconnect from healthcare. Next slide. There was is a great uh, uh, study looking at out of San Francisco. It's now 10 years old, but I don't think much has changed. Um, this is looking at HIV positive uh, TGMB patients. And it was across the city and it looked at the last viral load in a calendar year for all sort, for the entire population uh, from public health data in San Francisco. And they were looking at people who were injecting drugs. They were looking at all sorts of uh, different racial and ethnic identities. Every which way they broke it, the only thing that jumped out was that TGMB people were ex much more likely to not have their viral load suppressed. Or even c when compared to people injecting drugs the TGMB population, that was the only thing that uh, predicted a much higher likelihood of not being suppressed virally. So it's very real what we're talking about. Uh, the next slide. And I think that, that that data point really speaks to the lack of engagement and the lack of connection and the lack of trust uh, with the health system. So what can we do uh, to change that? 
You know, it's so important when you uh, think of an individual entering the health system to see it from their perspective. And if you are a TGMB identified person and you come into a health center and there is nothing there, there's no signage, there is no nothing to suggest to you that this is a place where they're going to get you, then you're probably never going to make it as far as even meeting the medical provider in the back office. Um, the experience thus far, I, I used to work in the, in the South Bronx and there's one experience that just stands out for me when I was starting to build a TGMB practice there and we hadn't really yet done a good job of training our staff or looking at our systems and I had a, a trans female identified patient who showed up, was in the waiting room, presented in a uh, female dress and was clearly identified with the female gender but she had not yet changed her insurance card and her ID and the only way we had the, uh, the sign in form just asked for your name and that was it um, time you arrived or whatever and so she's sitting there in this crowded waiting room in the South Bronx and the receptionist calls out her uh, male name, which was on her card. And so she had to stand up in this waiting room full of other people and go to the back. So you might think, oh, that would have been really embarrassing and off-putting and all of those things. Yes, it was that, but you know, it was more than that. You know, the murder rate for trans women in particular is astronomical. I don't know who else was in that waiting room. I don't know if after the visit they left and were followed home. So we are not only talking about trying to make this environment affirming, we're actually talking about the safety and the, the risk of death to our patients just in that simple act. Um, next slide, please. So uh, building trust, training, and local knowledge, these are all really important things. Next slide. Another important uh, key thing is about informed consent. Uh, this is what we do throughout medicine for so much of what we do with uh, uh, many drugs that have side effects. We talk about the pros, the cons, and uh, discuss it with the patients, they make a decision. This is the principle of informed consent. Next slide. And we use this for uh, uh, talking about hormone care uh, and it is a way to quickly engage the person, get them onto hormones and you'll very quickly uh, have engaged that patient and be able to take care of them and do all of the other things you want to do. Next slide. Once a patient is engaged in care, it's really helpful if we have tools that are built into our systems that are designed with TGMB patients in mind. This is usually not so. Our health, system, our health record is definitely not built with this in mind. We've had to uh, add in a lot of templates and do a lot of things to make sure that um, uh, we have triggers to help us. This is an organ inventory. You know, you don't, it's not always obvious as you see a patient what organs they have. And of course, that's what guides what preventative care you need to do for that individual. So this is a really important and helpful tool. Our next slide. So um, Callan Lord, you know, has many different support services. Um, I don't think, you know, no one's expecting every primary care place offer all of these, but uh, certainly these are the sort of things that may come up as you take care of a uh, uh, TGMB person in primary care. The key is that, you know, everything else about taking care of this patient is the same as it is for every other, pa uh, every other patient. Next slide. Um, We've talked about engaging, building trust. Um, 
it's clear that primary care providers are not already trained and they need training to take on this work. Um, remember that 10 to 20 percent of 2,000 patients, um, 10 to 20 patients out of 2,000 uh, will identify as TGMB. So this is a, a, a significant cohort within that group. And TGMB people get colon cancer, they have hypertension, they have diabetes, arthritis, everything else that we know how to take care of. If you think of that organ inventory, that is really going to guide what you need to do from the primary care, preventative care perspective. In terms of uh, hormone care, it's fairly straightforward. There are a lot of guidelines out there. Next slide. Um, we actually partner with a great uh, e-consult platform called Rubicon uh, MD. This allows you to submit uh, a consult and an e-consult and get a response within 24 hours to guide specific questions. The guidelines for hormone care we recommend are to look at the Endocrine Society for dosing recommendations. Uh, look at our website for more broader recommendations. Our, our dosing is being updated, so I would recommend the Endocrine Society for that. And if possible, if you can partner with something like Rubicon MD, this is a great way to support providers getting more nuanced care um, uh, with uh, hormone provision. So. That's it. Uh, you know, I obviously haven't gone into details of which hormones to use. Uh, those are readily available if you go to the Endocrine Society or the Cal and Lord website. Um, WPATH is another organization I'd recommend you take a look at, the World Professional Association of Transgender Health, who are coming out with updated guidelines this year. Thank you.